All right, sorry. I should ask that when I was recording. <laughs> so, okay. so the the Canadian girls baseball was based in Toronto. We have a head office in Toronto, but we have locations across the country. Oh, okay. So it's exciting times, huh? I think so. Yeah. We're excited that we're growing quickly. So I believe uh, uh, the team is um, going to be based in Barry. So we have a league opening in Barry, so a community league for girls ages four to 16. Oh, four. Yep, starting at age four, or even three. If they're turning four this year, they can still join us. Oh, that'd be interesting to see. Is that, do you put the, the ball on the, sorry, I'm not, but you might notice I'm not from here, so baseball is not my first <laughs> Yeah, maybe you, you should join us for some lessons. Pardon? Maybe you should join us for some lessons. Um, maybe I should. Well, I, I I did go and watch the when I first came to Canada. I watched the Blue Jays a lot, so I liked the game, but I've just never played it. I've been to a batting cage and didn't hit a thing. So. No, hitting the hardest part. When you hit a ball, even the best players in the world only hit it three times out of ten. Wow. But when of that age, you've got the like stick and you put the ball on top. Yes, it's called a tee. And yeah. So with a T. So we put the ball on top, but we teach them quickly. We toss it to them um, because it's about hand-eye coordination. Yeah. So, so we do different things, but yeah, they hit it off a T. Oh, right. So wait, how long does that happen then they go into a competitive game? Oh, sorry. sorry? What it, sorry, I didn't see. Oh, no, sorry. I have to apologize. I've got a bad accent. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm just wondering, so the age groups, so it's four to six, what? four to eight. We, we, our age group overall is age four to 16. Yeah. But four and five year olds play together and six and seven year olds play together. So they're and so on. Age. Yeah. So I believe as well, I mean, Jen was telling me that um, one of the reasons for this was that it wasn't possible for girls to get scholarships. Um, well, actually, there are some girls who have scholarships to American universities in baseball now. There have been two that have baseball scholarships. Usually, girls are forced to play softball um, okay. because softball is a sport that girls can get scholarships in, but only 1% of players in any sport are going to get a scholarship. So it shouldn't stop you from playing a sport because you're not going to get a scholarship. I mean, that's a long way off from age four and yeah. the, the skills are transferable if you really want a scholarship a lot of our women's national team players in canada play softball at their universities yeah i believe it's a fairly recent thing though that it's now opened up for the girls to get scholarships yeah it's very recent just recently in the last few years major league baseball has started running programs for girls and young women so 16 year olds can go to special weekends that are run by major league baseball and training camps and scholarships are available but you know creating a love for the game they can also work in baseball they can also work as trainers and coaches and all kinds of things so yeah. it's about love for the game more than scholarships well, I, I agree entirely I mean I, I played sports when I was younger and uh, I was described as deceptively slow I played football and uh, so, but it's the love of the game, and it, it's it's what it teaches you. It, it's more than just a. It teaches you life, if you like. That is what we believe. Yeah, baseball especially, because I mean, you said you you couldn't hit a ball, but you kept trying, but then you gave up. So at a young age, we're teaching kids: you get up, you try, you fail. You have to do it in front of everybody you know, your whole team, your family, friends people who are watching, and then you have to fail, get up and do it again. So they're learning how to lose. And the life skill, learning how to lose is going to create, you know, you kids will become future leaders because they're not scared to fail. They're not scared yeah. to try something and not succeed because eventually they will succeed and that success will be even sweeter because they failed so many times. Yeah, and it, it, it teaches social skills as well. And, and this day and age when 
so many youngsters are tied to computers. I think it's great that sports bring them out of that. I agree. Yeah, it teaches teamwork. It teaches, you know, empathy, which is a big one. Yeah. Um, you know, if, they're, if their teammates fail, they've got to cheer them on anyway. It teaches... Um, yeah, how to listen to authority, how to work together. I mean, there's how to be on time, how to tuck your shirt in. Like, yeah. you know, they sound like basic things, but they're things that kids don't learn when they're not in sport. And team sport does it more than, you know, more than individual sports in a lot of areas, the teamwork piece especially. And so baseball, you know, it's not something that girls get, which is why when we're opening and girls are joining us because they don't have an opportunity anywhere else. Oh, yeah. I mean, so you're going to be based in Barry. Well, the league's one of the leagues is in Barry. Whereabouts is that going to be played? That's a really good question. I will tell you. Um, give me one second. So it looks like we'll be somewhere around Bear Creek. Okay. Um, we haven't confirmed which diamonds we'll be using yet, but we know that we'll be in Barry, somewhere right. around there. Um, and we're just waiting to hear for sure which diamonds we can get. So when does it start? It starts the second weekend in July and it is seven weeks long. So it goes until the end of August and it's once a week, um, every Saturday morning for seven weeks. And it's about, depending on the age group, an hour to an hour and 45 minutes. And that's the whole commitment. Okay. And it's, when a younger, I know in some of the soccer, sorry, I go back to soccer, but it's my heritage, I suppose. Um, <laughs> they started making the younger people, um, four or five-year-olds up to about, I think it's about eight, non-competitive. Is that the same in baseball? So the way we do it is our whole league is not really competitive. We, I call it a developmental league. So we're teaching the skills to every age group. So we spend the first part of our time each week learning different skills and how to use them. And then every age group plays a game. So everybody's on a team, even at age four, they play a game. It's a little bit of a shorter game at age four, five, and six, but they, they learn the skills of the game because baseball is a game where you have to have you know, there's something called baseball IQ. You actually have to learn how the game works. Okay. Because um, it's a lot more um, than just, you know, kicking a ball down a field and getting it in a net. You have to understand where you're supposed to run and when you're allowed to go. And there's a lot of rules about it. So, um, so we start teaching that early, but we're not competitive. We're all cheering for each other. And yeah. so, yeah. Does it never go to a competitive stage for the older kids? So we have a competitive option. The older kids in our regular league don't, it doesn't become competitive um, for like the eight to 16 year olds. We still just play a game for fun. We're learning during the game, but we have competitive options. They're called okay. our select teams and they, that's something in addition, if they want more baseball or they want more competitive baseball, they can play an extra day a week and practice an extra day a week. Sorry about that. Well, that's and, okay. Uh, and they and and that's an option for them. Um, but in our regular league, no, because at 16 years old, we've got lots of girls joining us who've never picked up a glove before. So just okay. because she's 16 doesn't mean she's ready to play at a higher level of the game. But well, do you have girls? How how long has this been going for? We opened in 2016, and we do have girls who've been with us from the time we started. <laughs> Something's determined. <laughs> my dog, my dog is ready to be picked up from his <laughs> hair trip. So, um, so we have girls that stay with us, but in every age group, they're learning a new skill. So at age four, like you mentioned, they're hitting off a tee. And then as they get a little bit older, we're teaching them how to throw a ball that's tossed in the air to them. And then later we teach them with a pitching machine. So a machine that tosses the ball a little bit harder. And then we teach them how to pitch themselves. So it's like a gradual progression of skills. It's not about becoming more competitive. It's about learning more skills of baseball as they get older. Yeah, I remember I first went to, well, in Britain, we call it rounders. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I've heard of that. <laughs> But when I first went to Blue Jays, 
uh, it took me a while, but there's, you're right. There's so many rules. There's so many things. Fly, um, when to run too fast, what a ball is, what strike. Do, okay. do you have to do some of the umpire? So we actually have all female umpires. We train our umpires and we have a program now for junior umpires. So our younger girls starting at age 11 can umpire with us. Um, and they, it's a job, they get paid. And then if they oh. want to, they can actually take a course and be an umpire anywhere in the province. So, wow. um, so we're teaching them. We're also really what we're trying to do is teach every part of the game. So our coaches, our girls are female, our umpires are female, our players are female. So we're teaching them that they can be any part of the game and, and we're giving them a place to do it sort of safely, whether or not people aren't yelling at them and throwing things at them. So, so, yeah. so you're self-sufficient really. Yeah. Well, we're trying to be, we're working our way there. Yeah. So in many, in many um, provinces does it cover, does it cover all provinces? We're not in all the provinces yet. We're in, we, we're on from east to west though. So we're in PEI in Nova Scotia. We're in Ontario, um, Manitoba and British Columbia. So we're working our way across. So it's quite a big organization then. It's grown. I mean, we have a few hundred girls in each location and we're growing all the time because we're the only girls baseball league in the country. And we're trying to make sure the girls have opportunities to play no matter where they are. But for the management team like yourself, there must be a, quite a few of you now to manage all this. We have um, in every area that we're in, we have something called a regional coordinator. So we have you know, a woman who, um, who works with us to do outreach and get to know the people who know the community, who can promote what we're doing in the community, find staff people, find players. So yeah, we have a good number of them. Um, and the more we grow, the more employees we can have. Is that all controlled from Toronto? So, I mean, I'm in Toronto, it's our head office. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this last year has made us a lot more virtual. Um, so we're able yeah. to extend what we're doing. Um, our head umpire is not in Toronto. Our coaching coordinator is not in Toronto. So I'm in Toronto. Um, oh, okay. But uh, but our you know our administrator is not actually in the city of Toronto. Um, so we're in Ontario mostly still. That's our biggest region. Um, but we have again any province that we're in, we have staff people in those provinces. It sounds as if I shouldn't apply for a job anyway. You can apply. You know what? We we love having. We don't turn away men. I'll, we have parent volunteers, and we encourage yeah. dads volunteer but we also believe that girls should have role models i mean if you look at sports there's no girls that they'll see playing baseball unless they really try hard to find them yeah they try to show them that you can do it and the best way to show them is by actually showing them so they can see it so i take it you played yourself i did not play no <laughs> i'm like you no interest no knew nothing about baseball no interest in baseball um huh. But I had a daughter when she was six, she wanted to play and she played, but she was the only girl. There were 400 boys in her age group and she was the only girl and she wanted to quit. And we invited some friends to the park um, and we had 45 friends come out. And right. we did, a year later, we had so much fun. We did it again and 350 girls came out. Wow. So then I realized this is bigger than my daughter. This is bigger than our little park in our community so we decided to grow it from there so that's where it all started then that's where it all started yeah, yeah nice. it's a good story yeah you know what it's i mean she's proud of it it's meaningful for her and she still plays and loves the game and it's given her a place to play and make friends and feel proud of herself and so and what age is she now part of me what, what age group does she play in now she is 11 now all right Oh, no, good. So, so it goes, she goes all the way then. She could. She was invited to train with the provincial team um, a while ago. And so she has the skills. She just has to want to stick with it. So all this feeds into like a provisional and national. and. Yeah. So we have partners in the provinces. So we can, we have 
coaches and players from the provincial teams and the national teams as our coaches. And we can, um, and we, sorry, and there are, there are coaches and there are, there are role models. And then we have those coaches who can identify our players who are good and they can go into the development teams for the provinces. Um, so, so yeah, we try to make sure the girls who want to play more competitive have the opportunity to. It's almost like um, a farm team, if you like. Um... Yeah, exactly. And the more girls that are there, the more girls the provinces have to choose from. So it benefits everybody. There is the more competitive level will be more competitive if there are more yeah. players. Yeah. Do you ever do any interprovincial games or anything like that? Maybe just for fun, but not competitive one. So we do. We run a tournament every year, um, except for 2020. And we have teams come from all over and the states and different provinces and individual girls can join too. And then we we do have one team that's kind of extra, plays at a slightly higher level and they've traveled to the United States for play. Um, my goal is someday to have those teams within each province play like a interprovincially and for, do a national tournament with all of our leagues in different areas that they can yeah. all come together uh we're not quite there yet we've only been around we're, we've been around five years but we've actually only played four out of those five because of COVID, so yeah unfortunately the last year's put the kibosh and a lot of stuff so That's so it's right. like a, you have to catch up a year now exactly so have, have you got a time scale of when you hope to get this done by or is it kind of fluid at the minute um I think we know that by 2022 that we expect to enter two other provinces and um, and offer some more programming in the provinces that we're in already, specifically Nova Scotia. We want to expand our programming. We're new in British Columbia. So, you know, it takes a while to get the numbers of girls you need to create teams mm. competitively against each other. Um, and then I think by 2024, hopefully we will have a good base and be able to expand our more competitive aspect of what we're doing. And hopefully the provinces and the provincial teams and the communities that are around those provincial organizations will get together and we'll be able to work together that we don't have to offer everything because we can't do everything. Yeah, yeah. We'll start to get on board and start doing something for younger kids and working on their development programs. Yeah. But do you get support from any of the um, city councils or, or is it all on yourselves? I would, I mean, people say, yay, great job. So, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help much. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a great help. A lot of what we do is, you know, breaking down walls and knocking on doors, asking for, um, asking for people to help us even just find fields because that can be a big barrier to sport. A lot of the baseball organizations in any city, they basically own the field. The field yeah. permit is grandfathered. It belongs to somebody else, and we can't get there unless we ask them yeah. for their permission. Um, but in terms of other support, there's no financial support from the levels of government. Oh, okay. Provincial well, government. hopefully that changes. The bigger you get, hopefully, that, 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 it will help. It would be nice. Our whole kind of sport organizations in Canada is a little bit broken because the the government only funds sport organizations that have Olympic teams and baseball. Women's baseball has a, a national team that plays in world championships against other teams, but they're not an Olympic sport. So okay. There's no funding for them, which means no funding for us. But yeah, maybe this will change all that. Just this conversation. Yeah, it, uh, it all takes time. So most of your girls, do you get, is it mostly word of mouth uh, that the girls get to hear about it? Yeah, it's word of mouth. It's, um, we have our regional coordinators who call schools and we don't really do any advertising um, unless there's somebody offers us something amazing, but you know, this helps, anything helps spread the word. And so um, we hope as girls sign up that their friends will start coming and generally, if we do a good job when we offer our program, you know, the next year more girls come. Yeah. And, 
that's how it grows. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure once the girls get to see it in Barry, and you'll get plenty. A very, it's a very sport orientated city. So it is. That's just, why we're seeing there. So I hope so. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm sure they're just getting a new uh, soccer team. They're getting new fields. Does the Barry Baycats never you ever approach them to help you for equipment or anything like that? So, um, so we're with we've you know partnered sort of with Barry Baseball. Um, so they are helping us find fields, and that's where our partnership stops at this point. Right. We'll we'll see. But if if anybody wants to offer us equipment or sponsorship or players. We're here. They can find me. Uh, we, well, we actually sponsor Barry Baker, so maybe ask them if they want to help. If you want to talk to them, we take all the help we can get. We take <laughs> equipment. You know, we used to take um, equipment that if a league, if a baseball league like the Barry Baycats was getting rid of their equipment and they were going to send it to Cuba or Africa, I would yeah. say, give it to us first. We'll, we'll use it and then we'll send it. You know, once we can replace our own, because we we were grow we're growing so fast that we can't afford the equipment to get equipment everywhere, and we can't we don't have a lot of resources for those kinds of things. So, yeah. um, so yeah, we always we love to work with local leagues, and if they'll you know donate stuff to us. Now we have some some sponsorships or not sponsorships, but donations from some places in the United States that will give us some of their gently used equipment. Um, and you know that's how we try to move forward. So. Yeah. But the, the the one good thing about baseball, and I'm saying this, and you might correct me, it's not like hockey. The equipment you, you don't need as much equipment, and it's not as expensive, so it's more affordable for for families. Hundred percent. It's much more affordable. We provide everything. What what sort of um, gave us a little pause was that. Now the province is making every player have their own bat and their own helmet. Because oh, because COVID. Can't share things. So we used to just have an equipment bag and the team would share. Um, but now, you know, we don't want to ask girls to go out. We don't want to ask parents to go buy a bat. So we take bat donation. That's what's being donated to us from the U.S. organization. They're giving us bats so we can give one to every player. Um, and then we're still trying to figure out helmets. So really a girl just needs to come with a baseball glove and running shoes. And if she can't afford it, we'll give her a baseball glove. We sell them at a discount on our website. Um, so we we try to make it as hassle-free and as accessible as possible for parents and for kids. Okay. Because I take it all the equipment differs for per age. The bats have to be lighter for a four-year-old. And yeah, and it's not. I mean, it's like a... a it's not only lighter, but it's shorter. So as they grow, they need different equipment every year until they reach a certain age. So. Uh, never stopped. Yeah, never stopped. Well, that's a good thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah know, that's very true. <laughs> so is there any way that, I mean, we'll put this out and hopefully that helps you. And I've all approached Barry Baycats and see what they say. I would so, love that. Um, if, anything you'd like to add? Um, no, just that people can find us at CanadianGirlsBaseball.com and that they should sign up. Sign up your daughters. <laughs> I will. We will definitely put that in the bottom. Sign up here. Okay. It was great talking to you. Thank you for doing um, this. Oh, it. Sorry. I said thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Oh, hey, it was my pleasure. It was really... Oh, the more sport we can get in body, the better for me. So... Uh, best of luck, and I'm sure you'll come succeed. We'll I will come and watch. Good. And we'll, we'll teach you some things. <laughs> and you don't know, you have the saying you can't teach an old dog tricks. <laughs> well, that's good, because you're not old yet. <laughs> oh, well, you haven't seen me playing golf, so. <laughs> okay, well, great. Thank you very much, and best of luck for the future. Thank you very much. Take care. Okay. Bye.